In order to figure out where you want to put this little sacrificial insert, you need to figure out exactly where the drill bit is going to come down onto this base plate. So that requires taking it to your drill press. You don't necessarily need to fix it in place, you just need to make sure it's held exactly where it's going to be. And then just bringing your drill down, it doesn't need to be turned on, just so that a drill bit makes a divot right in the center. Now obviously I've already created mine in here, yours will just be blank but um, we can go through this process as if this wasn't here and it actually will make some of the processes clearer. So the first thing you do is get that dead center marked on the board. Now, depending on how the uh, base plate on your drill press works, it might be a little bit out of center. So what you have now is you've marked the distance from the back to that drill point and then I would think it's, it's worth marking the center of that as well. So I'll show you that process now, including the marking of the center, and then we'll move on from there. So took this to the drill press, I lined the back of the jig up with the back of my existing plate, and that is just to make sure that all of the mechanisms for raising it higher and lower aren't gonna get interfered with by this. So you don't wanna push this necessarily all the way back to your upright uh, post, because it might get in the way of your raising and lowering mechanism. And so once I had that in place, I also just looked underneath to make sure that the board was roughly centered over my existing uh, metal plate on the drill press. And then I brought the drills down slowly until it just touched the plate and it's left a little mark. So now, and that has basically given me the distance from the back of the jig to where the drill will touch the center. And I just wanna make sure that that is in the center from left to right. So I'm just checking that. I know that this is 600 wide, so I'm looking that it's about 300, and it is almost exactly. If yours is off to one side, then just mark it in the center and make sure that those points align. Now that we have a center point on our blank board, remember you won't have the sacrificial plate already installed, you need to decide how large you want this plate to be. I've done mine to be 120 mil by 120 mil. It just seemed like a reasonable size. The largest forcener, forcener bit I have is about 80 mils uh, in diameter, and I doubt that I would ever use a bit that was larger than that. So 120 mil worked for me. Again, it doesn't need to be a specific size, so you might find that once you've routed this cavity out, it's slightly larger or smaller. That's okay. You just need to make sure that all of your sacrificial plates that you make, and you can make a few of them, are exactly that size also. Now that you have your center point, like I said, my little plate is, is 120 by 120 mil. So I want to actually draw that square around that center point. Now the easiest way to do that is to mark 60 mil either side in both north and south directions and then draw a square that encompasses all of those lines. And then you'll want to make sure that that's actually square, it's true, to the edges that exist on the plate as well. Now the best way to do that is just to use a square and actually align your little plate marking with the edges of your board as well. So now that we have our square drawn around our centre point, we actually need to set up a fence now so that we can run our handheld router to create this cavity that the sacrificial piece is going to sit into. Now, the way that we can set the distance for these fences, and the fences are just going to be some pieces of plywood that we tack down onto this plate, uh, which keep them aside for now. The distance is actually going to be determined by the router bit that we're using. Now, I'm using a straight bit which has some blades on the bottom, which allows it to plunge a lot more effectively than a standard straight bit. You can get away with a standard straight bit, or you could use a spiral bit if you wanted, just something that plunges. But what you need to determine is the distance between the blade and the edge of the base of your handheld router. Now, this is important because it's the blade, the base that's gonna be hitting the fence, and obviously it's the blade that's gonna be cutting that recess. So this distance is what is gonna determine the distance between our fence and our hole. So on my router, 77 millimeters, and that is specific to this base plate and this particular router bit. So you'll definitely need to check, excuse me, you'll definitely need to check your own router and depending on whichever bit you'll be using, it'll be bigger or smaller than that. So we work from the square that we've created, we mark the boundaries for another square, which are in my case, 77 millimeters larger on all sides. 
So I just do four little marks on each edge and then I use my giant square again to mark our larger square and this larger square is the reference that we're going to be using to then place our fences in place. So once you've got that large square marked out, we can start placing these on and tacking them down. With your fences in place, you're ready to start routing out that uh, cavity. I did mine in three passes. It's 18 mil thick, so it's about six mil each pass. Uh, so set the depth of your route a bit to six mil. Get the router started, gently plunge it into the center, and then slowly enlarge that center hole running in the same direction around uh, the hole that you're creating so that you're always working against the bit rather than letting it grab. And then you just enlarge that in a spiral motion until you hit the edges of the fence that you've created, and that will give you the square edges that we need on the edge of our cavity here. And you then you just set the depth deeper for the next pass, which will take you to 12 mil and deeper again until you get to 18 mil. Make sure that that final pass is the exact depth that you want it to be. One way to double check that is to use the piece of material that you're actually using for the sacrificial bit, holding it against the router bit itself and making sure that they're exactly the same height. That's a really good way of double checking for your final pass. Now, as you might imagine, we're using a round straight bit. Well, all, all rounded bits are round in one way or another, but you're gonna have rounded edges in this square. Now, I've just cut mine to be square with a chisel, and that's really important so that every sacrificial piece that I make, I don't have to round those edges exactly. I wanted this to be square so that I can knock these straight off the table saw or the miter saw to go in very easily. If it's a difficult process, I'm just not gonna do it when I need these. So I needed to make it easy, easy for myself as possible. That's the process of creating that cavity. Clean out those corners with a chisel and you'll be left with a perfect square. The last step of the process is creating this little divot so that you can lift the piece out. And I've just done that with a force and a bit on my drill press. I actually clamped this, pl this piece in place and just ran a, what would it be? About a 25 mil force and a bit down into that until it was 18 mil deep. You can do that with anything you want. There's no need to use a router bit, but you can if you want to get fancy. Uh, that worked really well for me. You could even do that force in a hole before you routed this out if you wanted to. That would give you a location to place the router bit first, but I wouldn't complicate things too much with that. I did it afterwards and it worked out perfectly. Now you've got your recess, it's the correct depth, it's all nice and clean, you've cleaned out the edges, you've done your little Forstner finger divot. What you should do is just double check the exact size of this cavity so that you can cut your sacrificial plates to be that exact size. This might end up slightly larger or smaller depending on how good you are at measuring and where you tax these uh, fences down. Mine's, for instance, is 122 millimeters. So that's the size that my sacrificial inserts are going to be. It is square, however, which makes my life a lot easier. If it's not um, exactly square, that's fine. You'll just need to adjust your, um, your sacrificial bits to account for that. The only other piece that I added into this uh, drill press jig, and this was just something that I wanted personally on mine, is this additional keyhole track which allows me to put one of these hold down clamps really nice and close for clamping down small pieces of work. If you're interested in seeing the process of putting that together, check out 